So if you find this sleep story helpful or interesting, then give it a thumbs up, leave any comments that you've got below. And if you aren't already, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you can receive notifications of when future sleep stories go live. I have dozens and dozens of stories already on my channel that you can go and search. I also release new stories every single week. So I hope you enjoy this story. So just take a moment to listen along to this guided sleep meditation. And as you do, I don't know whether you'll fall asleep faster to the sound of my voice, or perhaps to the spaces between my words. And as you begin to drift comfortably asleep, so I'm just going to tell this story in the background. And it's a story about you going out one day on an adventure. And you head off on this adventure, walking into the woods. And as you walk into the woods, so you notice the way the sunlight shines down through the leaves creating shards of light dancing on the path in front of you. That sound of birds in the background, the sounds of the rustling leaves, each sound of each footstep, and as you walk and relax deeper into the woodland, so you notice that slight mist across the woodland floor, And you hear those sounds of those birds off in the distance. And way off in the distance you hear some gently running water. And you continue walking through the woods, heading towards that sound of the running water. And eventually you find your way to a clearing. And as you walk out into the clearing, so you notice the brightness of the sunlight shining down. You can notice the colour of the sky, the feeling of the breeze on your face, noticing the movement of the grass in the breeze, just gently swaying in waves before you. And as you look around this meadow, noticing plants, noticing some rabbits, noticing other animals feeding, grazing in the meadow, you look around you, you look over towards a stream. And you start walking towards that stream, noticing the sound of your footsteps as you walk on the grass, smelling the smell of the flowers, and hearing the sound of that running water, and at the stream you can notice what that water looks like as it bubbles past, flowing past, the occasional leaf flowing downstream. Seeing some birds occasionally come to the edge of the stream, dunk their heads in the water, flap their wings and wash themselves in that stream. And noticing a little frog on the other side of that stream, just hopping along and then being still on a stone for a while before leaping into the water and swimming down under the water and then rising back up out of that water again swimming to another part of the shore climbing out of that water and finding somewhere else to settle down motionless and you can notice the way the frog's throat is just gently moving in and out as it rests there on that stone. And you find a comfortable space beside this stream, under a tree, relaxing back against that tree, 
and closing your eyes and drifting and floating into a comfortable reverie. Just relaxing there, drifting, floating into a comfortable reverie. Feeling your breathing relaxing to the sound of the flowing water. Focusing your attention on that flowing water. On noticing how the sun shining through the tree above you makes light dance in front of your closed eyelids as you relax and drift and dream deeper inside your mind. And as you drift and float and dream, relaxing under that tree, so you notice that swaying feeling and that movement of being in a cable car, climbing up the side of a mountain, and then having that sense of looking out of that cable car, seeing the ground below, seeing the most beautiful forest from above. Seeing where the cable car has risen from. And looking around and noticing the mountain you're ascending. Noticing the snow glistening. Like millions of diamonds in the sunlight. And feeling the movement of that cable car as it ascends. And being on that cable car to the top of the mountain. Then as that cable car reaches the top of the mountain. So it pulls into like a little platform area. The door opens but the cable car doesn't stop. It just slowly passes along the side of the platform. As you and others climb out of the cable car and walk out onto that platform as it moves slowly past the platform. Before it turns around, heads past a platform on the other side where people board that cable car. And then it continues its journey back down the mountain. And you leave this platform area. You wrap up warm and continue up this mountain. You're near the top of the mountain already. And as you climb, you begin to have this sense that you're searching for something, but you don't quite know what. And then, when you're very high up in these mountains, and you can look around, you can see other mountains in this range. You can look down on the clouds, on the trees below. You can look off into the distance at the way the sun is moving through the sky. You can feel that cool, crisp air. And you notice near an edge that there appears to be a stack of stones. And you head over to those stones. And you see what looks like a large stone for sitting on. And so you sit yourself down on that stone. And as you do, you begin to notice. Almost like an audible vibration. That seems to pulse and vibrate through you. As if somehow there's energy passing from that stone through you as you gaze at that stack of stones. And then you notice a light rising up from around you as if you're sitting inside a pillar of light. And as that pillar of light rises up around you, 
so your eyes here close, and as your eyes close, so you relax even deeper. You notice your breathing relaxing deeper. And you, with your eyes closed, can notice that light pulsing and moving in front of you, across your closed eyes. You notice sounds around you changing, the temperature of this area changing. And then you notice that pulsing, that vibrating, calming. And as it does, so you open your eyes and you find that you're still sitting on that stone. You still have those standing stones in front of you. And the light that you were within has faded, but around you is grass and reasonably flat land with just the slightest hills around you, almost like just vast meadow all around you. And you stand up and look around, you feel the warmth of the air, you notice you're wearing appropriate clothing for this weather, not the clothing you were wearing when you closed your eyes. And you hear what sounds like a roar mixed with the sound of an eagle. And you look up and look around. And you see this enormous dragon swooping and flying. And this dragon's flying almost like an eagle. So graceful seeming so light in the sky, seeming to take very little effort to propel itself, to glide, to move, to fly. And you watch as that dragon flies around, and just like a bird it almost seems to catch up drafts, and rise up higher, circling around, surveying the land below. And you almost feel a bit surprised by this. You don't quite know what to make of this, how you've transitioned and transported from being on a mountain to being in this location. And you see off in the distance what looks like a really old village. And you walk down towards that village. And as you walk, you're gazing at the sky. And you notice there's more than one dragon. There are many dragons circling. But they seem to be really spaced out from each other. As if perhaps they have their own territories. And you don't know whether they're any threat or not. You just head towards that village. And as you head towards that village, so you find a dirt road leading into that village. So you follow this road. You pass a signpost that seems to be pointing to the village and pointing in a few other directions letting you know there's other things around in this world. And you walk into the village, hearing the hustle and bustle of people in a marketplace, seeing really old taverns, almost medieval looking. And you walk and go into one of those taverns, and everyone's talking with each other, and then they seem to stop as you walk in, as if somehow you're the outsider. And then they slowly start with a murmur, 
and start talking to each other again. You walk up to the counter. You ask where you are. And you ask when you are and for more details. And they tell you a time period that makes no sense to you. Doesn't sound like a calendar you know of. And they name a place you've never heard of. And you realise somehow you must be somewhere else. Because you're aware there's no dragons where you came from. And yet there are dragons here. And you ask about the dragons. And they explain that the dragons are largely okay. They don't really attack people. But they do hunt quite large prey. And you find it intriguing that they can speak your language and that you can understand them and that they can understand you. And that somehow you're wearing clothes that are appropriate for the weather but also clothes that fit with the kind of things everyone else here is wearing. And you head out of the tavern, having had a brief drink. And you'd found that you'd got some money in your pocket, some gold coins. And you paid with some of that money. And you walked down towards the market. And there was somebody cooking potatoes in a curious way. And they were offering you different types of potatoes, different ready-made food. And so you had what was almost like a mashed potato ice cream. It was served up in potato skin, but the potato had been separated from the skin, mashed, made really creamy, and then placed back in the potato skin with the potato skin being colder so that you can hold it and you can gradually squeeze on the potato skin, squeezing that mashed potato to eat it. And you found this warm mashed potato from this potato skin really nice. And like the fact that if you didn't mind eating cold potato skin, you could then eat the packaging and keep clean fingers. And so you walked through the market, you spoke to a few people. You looked at what these buildings here looked like, their beams. Their distinctive, almost medieval looking structures noticing details on some, how buildings were individualised by those who built them. But generally these buildings were quite basic. And you walked through the town and noticed at the far side of the town was a river with a water mill beside it. And you could hear that water mill moving as the water flowed down that river, turning the wheel, and then flowed on the rest of its journey, down to a lake. And so you decided to head down to that lake. You crossed a stone bridge over the river. You walked down, following that road, all the way down to that lake. And down at the lake, you could see somebody sitting there. On a large rock, legs crossed, looking so still. And so you walked over to them. And you asked them 
who they were and what they were doing. And at first they didn't respond. And then, almost like they've just finished a book and just closed the pages after the final chapter, they opened their eyes and looked over at you. And they've said that they were waiting for you to come and join them. They just had to finish some inner work, but now they're ready to pay you their attention. And that they knew you would come here. That you would follow that portal here. And so they were waiting for you to arrive. They stepped off that rock. They gestured for you to sit on the rock. And so you sat on that rock, crossed your legs. And relaxed. And as you did, you notice a beam of light rising up around you. And almost like that light started to pass through you and warm you comfortably. And they said from outside the light, to focus on the light. And that focusing on that light, you can begin to take down any barriers, any blocks to leading the life that you want. All you have to do is be guided by that light. Be guided by the light and allow that to pass through you. And so you rested there and you breathed. And you extended your out-breaths. Relaxing you further and deeper. And as you extended those out-breaths, relaxing you further and deeper. So that light began to turn a comfortable blue. And began to pass through you. And you could feel that blue light passing through your head. Through your forehead around your ears, deep within your head, almost breathing it in through your nose and breathing out any negativity, any blocks to leading the life you want to lead and achieving what you want to achieve, breathing that out as you breathe in that blue light, as it passes down into your lungs and down through your body. And out to your arms, down to your fingertips, and down through your body, deeper and deeper. Going down through your body, through your chest, your back, your lower back, your abdomen. Down to your legs, through your legs to your feet. Having that healing blue light passing through you, resonating within you, while breathing out any negativity. And allowing that blue light to begin to drive change. And as you rested there, relaxing deeper and deeper with the blue light. So you started to have thoughts about the future about things that you want to do and you see yourself achieving those things you notice what you look like as you achieve those things you notice the tone of voice you use you notice what others notice as you relax there and you notice the way you behave differently as someone achieving those things. And then you notice, as if you're seeing through your own eyes, hearing through your own ears, feeling what you'll feel, going through that future, achieving what it is you want to achieve. And that begins to resonate deep within you, begins to create 
the relevant neurological changes. And you begin to realize that your brain can't tell the difference between something that's real and something that's vividly imagined in terms of how it learns. You can really throw a ball and your brain will respond as if you've thrown that ball. You can imagine throwing the ball and your brain will respond as if you were really throwing the ball. It'll send impulses to the muscles. It'll make the neural pathways as if the actions are happening. And you realize with this insight that while you're here mentally rehearsing the future, that your brain is learning as if it's already done that in the future. Almost like practicing to do something, so that when you come to do it, you know how to do it because you've practiced it. And having that happen just in your mind. And then as that blue light passes through you, and does all its work, it begins to change to white light, as all the blue healing gets absorbed within you, and that white light begins to flow from you through the ground, circling back to be with nature. And then your awareness turns to that person beside you who lets you know you've achieved the changes you set out to achieve. It's just a question now of discovering that. And you climb down off the rock. They climb back onto the rock. They close their eyes and drift into a meditation. And you walk over. You put your hands into the lake. Feel the temperature of the water. Splash some of that water on your face. You work your way back up through the village. Back through the meadow back to where you found yourself sitting when you arrived here. You sit back down, drift back into a reverie, back into a deep meditation. And then you find yourself being up in that mountain. You walk back to the cable car, you start travelling down the mountain in the cable car. And as you do, you start to hear that stream trickling by. And finding yourself drifting in a reverie under the tree. And you walk back through the woods, you head home. And that night, you begin the process of change, of creating the future you want, being the future you that you want to be. Having that representation in mind of what it is you're going to achieve. And you relax in bed, settle down and comfortably drift off asleep.